How's it going everyone? Samson C's here again from Ross IELTS Academy. Now as many of you are struggling to get a high band score in your IELTS speaking, I'm here today to do some practice in part one of speaking about clothes and fashion. Nice topic there. I see many of you have faced this kind of topic in part one. Of course you have. This is one of the most common ones in this part. What I want to do is show you what possible questions you may be asked on this topic and how easily you can get seven and above in speaking just by giving some short but clear answers. Who says you need to be an instructor or a native speaker to do that? You should just learn the strategies and you'll be good to go. That's what I'm here for, but before we get started, please like, subscribe to our channel because there are so many other free and useful material on the way and you may want to use them to boost your score in just a short amount of time. You also may want to visit our website, which is www.rossielts.com, to join our club of 2,000 successful candidates by taking our amazing writing, reading, listening, and of course, speaking courses. Now, I want to thank all of you for your lovely comments on our YouTube channel. It's awesome. Every day we receive hundreds of these messages and comments from you, which mean the world to us. Let's take a look at those comments giving us positive vibes. Thank you to Saeed, Ali, Sorab, and Dairy Communication for your lovely comments. That's interesting that Saeed asked about our today topic. He says, Splendid video, next topic cards, fashion, what you wear daily, and etc. I see there are a lot of questions about fashion in IELTS speaking lately. It is very popular. Okay then, you got it. Thank you all for your lovely comments and subscribing to our channel. In the next videos, we will read more of these together, so feel free to leave us your comments. Very well. Now, I will zoom in on some of the questions you might be asked about clothes and fashion and show you how easily you can answer such questions. Once again, you should not explain a lot in part one. You should give a two to three sentences answer because this part is no longer than five minutes. Even if you give long answers, the examiner will stop you to ask you the next question. Now, I want to give you the answer to some of these questions, but make sure to watch this video all the way to the end. So, here's how it works. We will be playing a game. There will be two candidates, one of them myself, the other Menos, I believe, and an examiner present. But it will be so much fun and useful at the same time. Isn't it interesting? Preparing for IELTS via playing games. Guess what? Since Ross IELTS Academy is traveling the world and we offer online services, you can also take part in this game. All you need to do is contact us here in the comments or on our website. Hello everyone, how are you? We are here today playing this speaking combo. So we have two candidates, Samson and Mehnaz, and I'm here to evaluate them based on their performance in the first part of IELTS speaking. Our today's topic is clothes and fashion. So here's how this game works. I will be asking them the exact same questions on the same topic and the candidate who presses the buzzer first will go first to answer the question. And at the end of the game, I will be evaluating them based on the four criteria in IELTS speaking, which are fluency and coherence, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy, and pronunciation. And finally, we'll have a winner. So, guys, how are you today? How's everything? Not too bad, thanks. Yourself? I'm fine, I'm fine, okay. thank you. I'm great too. I'm. I think I'm ready. I wanted to say I'm ready and I was just like, are you? <laughs> I cannot strongly say I'm ready. Exactly. I'm, just ready. I'm trying to be ready. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure Do you like ready. this topic, clothes and fashion? Do you normally follow fashion? I really don't. That's why, I'm, uh, that's why I think I'm, I might not be ready. I mm -hmm. don't have many ideas. I've got mixed feelings about it. It's like I've got one foot in it, but 
That's about it. But let's see how it goes. Yes, how it goes. I, I think I can answer the questions because it's part one of IELTS speaking and you don't need to give me such long answers. Then you can just cover it. Yeah, that's the good choice. You should choice. just keep talking. Just keep talking. Okay, keep talking. perfect. We can do it. We can <laughs> yes, do it. Sure. We can talk. <laughs> so now I want to start with the first question and you can just press your buzzer. How important are clothes and fashion to you? Samson. Oh, this is a crazy question to ask me. I mean, I considered myself quite a hilly-billy uh, several years ago, but now mm -hmm. I guess I'm becoming a little bit more involved in the motion of fashion and design. Okay, Mehnaz. That is kind of hard for me to answer because uh, I can't say that I'm uh, into fashion and mm -hmm. uh, clo uh, clothes, but I don't really follow the trends and uh, I just prefer to dress up based on my own taste and enjoy myself. <laughs> okay, great. Now let's go with the second question. What kind of clothes do you dislike? Mehnaz. Um, I would definitely say tight clothes because as crazy as it might sound, it kind of um, makes me feel hard to breathe and mm -hmm. um, that's why I prefer um, the clothes that I feel more comfortable in, like um, dresses or any other kind that is not so tight and doesn't make me feel uncomfortable or, I don't know, not so very good about myself. Okay, thank you. Samson, how about you? Well, if I'm referring to myself about what kind of clothes I dislike, it would have to be the baggy clothes, rather the opposite to what Men has just mm -hmm. said. Uh, because I feel like it doesn't make me look so good and I feel sort of out of proportion physically if I'm wearing baggy mm -hmm. clothes all the time. So I'm not, I'm not a fan of baggy clothes that look too loose and sad. Okay, thank you. Now the third question. Where do you usually buy your clothes? Samson. Where do I usually purchase my accessories? Well, uh, clothing, I definitely would have to go to the north of Tehran because I've got such a huge variety and everyone always thinks that they're expensive and overpriced or basically a rip-off, but I've always found very good shirts and trousers there. Mm -hmm. So definitely Tajrish, the north of Tehran, is my hub for buying clothes. Wonderful. How about you, Marinos? Thinking about your question, I, I couldn't really recall a specific place that I usually go to buy my clothes, uh, but uh, that's because I'm so easygoing when it comes to clothes and shopping, and I'm mm -hmm. definitely not a shopaholic or anything close to that. Okay, wonderful. And the last question here. How different are the clothes you wear now from those you wear 10 years ago? Mehnaz? Well, obviously, my taste in clothes and fashion uh, is very different uh, mm -hmm. and it has changed since 10 years ago. But when I think about it, I can see some similar patterns <laughs> and I think that's kind of interesting. So I think some things uh, change and some things just stay the same. <laughs> Okay, great. Samson? Well, my clothes and fashion situation definitely has altered since 10 years ago. You know, I used to be the casual guy wearing just jeans and trainers, but since I went on TV, I'm looking at all sorts of different formal clothes and sort of something between formal and sporty, because I happen to be a sports anchor, so it definitely has changed in me the way I dress. Okay, thank you very much. You both did great. Good. Thanks, Dad. Thank <laughs> but really, what do you think? How was it? It was a tricky uh, subject, I thought, mm -hmm. but yeah. you know, it was something I could talk about. Like you said, needed a range of vocabulary to talk definitely. about this topic. Mm -hmm. And Mehnaz, how about you? I didn't really have um, any idea <laughs> while I was answering the question. I was just trying to generate ideas and just keep talking. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the middle of the sentence, I was just like, oh, I can say this. And yeah. I was out of time. <laughs> Uh -huh. But but it was fine. It was all yeah. okay. Right. At least I could uh, manage to talk. Keep talking. <laughs> Keep talking. Exactly. That's the most Keep important talking. thing. Yes. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And now we can see what they did. The evaluation. Okay. Now I want to evaluate our dear candidates based on their performance in this part of IELTS speaking part one. 
and the topic was clothes and fashion, a tricky one. First, I want to start with the Samson. Wow, I loved his range of vocabulary, many, many synonyms, paraphrased form of the words. To mention some, I can say, for example, he said the overpriced, which is expensive. I'm not a hillbilly. He made a comparison between different things. Uh, I'm out of uh, proportion, I guess. He said, uh, instead, of instead of buying something, he said purchase, or I buy accessories, clothes, and such, such, such things. And um, I'm not a fan of something, so I could just hear a range of words in his speaking. Instead of change, he said alter. So these are some good words that you can also learn from him. Other than that, um, I loved, as I just mentioned, how he made comparisons between different things. His personality, his taste in the past and now what he does right now. So there was a switch between the different tenses past to present, present to future, like simple present, simple past, past continuous, used to, present perfect. There was a range of tenses in his speaking to talk about his grammatical range and accuracy. His pronunciation, his pace was totally fine. It was all great. And I couldn't hear many, many different connectives while he was talking to me, but the ones that he used were all uh, great and on point. They were just used appropriately. Now to talk about Mehrnaz, I can also say that her answers were just great because as she said, she didn't have much to say about uh, these questions, but she kept talking. Like, uh, even though she didn't know what to say about the place uh, where she goes uh, for buying her clothes and the different accessories, she just kept talking. She said there is no specific place, blah, 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 but I normally do this or I normally do that. So she did not stop and that's a very important thing. Um, plus, she used some good vocabulary related to fashion and clothes. For example, I follow the trends, I dress up, and I'm not a shopaholic, I'm not a person addicted to uh, shopping and buying things. That was a good one. Uh, she used some um, adverbs in the beginning of the sentence. She made some compound sentences. I could hear the word obviously, absolutely. These are some good ones that you can also use in your sentences. And some paraphrasing, like I'm not into something and I'm not a fan of something. These are good ones. Um, the only problem that I can say was her word stress. Sometimes, like in some sentences, she had uh, some word stress problems. And since English language is really stress-related language, you have to be careful with the stress of the words, like which one uh, is a stress, which one is not a stress, then she should have been a bit more careful about the word stress. So generally, I can say they both did great. This topic was a topic of words of collocations. They could just show off with the words that they were 100% sure about and they did. But to choose a winner, I can, it's always hard for me to choose a winner because they are both wonderful. But um, I can say that this time Samson did better because he didn't have that pronunciation and intonation problem. Uh, but thanks to both of them, it was just a great game and you can also join our games and play these games with us like when we are asking and answering the questions you can answer the questions too thank you very much and see you guys in the next videos follow us in the next ones there you see having a rival like that isn't it tough well this is how you can answer these questions of course you will not have a rival like Mehrnaz, hopefully. IELTS speaking isn't hard altogether. You just need to familiarize yourself with the topics which are more likely to be on the test day. And if you face an unfamiliar one, no need to worry. You can apply some techniques to manage the question and make yourself proud and ready. Guess what? In our speaking courses and mock tests of speaking, we will teach you all these strategies and give you feedback on what you do and show you the way to improve very easily. To enroll in them, you can visit our website www.rossielts.com. That's the site. In the next videos, we will work on other parts of IELTS speaking. Don't miss the next videos, guys. It's interesting preparing for IELTS through games, isn't it? So guess what? Ross IELTS Academy is international and you can also take part in this game. All you need to do is contact us here in the comments or on our website. 
I'm Samson Seas. Sees you next time.